Okay, so now we are looking at, in differential equations, we are looking at separable differential equations. Okay. Okay. This section on separable, on separable differential equations is a revision of material from MAM 1021, so you should find it fairly straightforward. Okay. We say that an ODE of the form dy dx equals fx times gy is separable. Okay. Separable DEs can easily be solved by dividing by g of y and then integrating with respect to x. Okay. So we have dy dx equals f of x gy, divide both sides by, by, by g of y, and you'll have 1 over g, g of y times dy dx equals f of x. Then you integrate both sides. Okay, but this dy dx dx, that's just the same as dy. That's one way of thinking of it. Another way I, I actually more commonly think about it is at this point I go, oh, okay, so here we have like dy over, sorry, let me only that. Here we have 1 over g of y times dy equals f of x dx. You know, at times I divide both sides by g of y and I times both sides by the, d, by the dx. So that, in effect, what I'm doing is we have all the y's on one side, including the dy, and all the x's on the other side, including dx. That's why it's called separable, because you can separate those things. Anyway, then you integrate you're there. Okay. So then you integrate both sides, and that should give you an expression for y of x. Well, give you something that you can solve for y of x, define y of x. Okay, so here's an example. Solve dy dx equals x root y with y of 0 equals 0. So let's just try that by ourselves first. So try it yourself first, then, then come back and see and see if you get what I get, and then we'll look at what the book, what the book did. So do you, we want to divide both sides by root y. I don't know why I bring it there. We want to divide both sides by root y, and times both sides by dx, so we get that. Then we want to integrate both of those. Okay, so the integral of one over root y, that's like y to the minus half, so you'll get y to the half, which is root y, um, but you need a 2 there, so that when you bring the half down, it cancels out, and that equals, and then now we'll have half x squared plus the constant factor. Okay? And then we want to solve that for y, so we could... Divide th we could divide through up by 2 and then square things, so we get ah. We also, we, we have that uh, y of naught equals 0, so that means that if y is naught, then x is, if y is naught, then x is naught. So something that in, you'd get 0 equals 0 plus c, so that means that c must equal 0. Okay. And then dividing throughout by 2 and squaring, we'll end up with y equals 1 over 4. Uh, not 1 over 4. It'll be, now, it'll be 1 over 16. 1 over 16, because we square it, x to the 4. Okay, so let's see. What, is that what they do? So you have dy, and is that what you do? So you have the equation, divide throughout by 1 over y, take the integral, yes. And you get 2 root y equals half x squared plus c. And because y of 0 equals 0, c equals 0. So there, and now we have y equals x to the 4 over the 16. Okay, but note that this is not the only solution. The trivial solution y equals 0, which we excluded earlier, also solves the DE. Why did we exclude y equals 0? Because we divided through by 1 over root y. So when we did that, we should maybe have said that, said either that or maybe you know, root y equals 0. If, you, if, if root y equals 0, you can't do that. Okay, now, if root y equals 0, then, of course, y equals 0. So it's a 
function that's constantly zero. Now the question is, is that a solution to the differential equation? Now you have to check it. So what's the derivative in terms of x of zero? It's just zero. That would be zero. And then on the right-hand side, you have x times the square root of zero, which is zero. So you have x times zero, which is, of course is zero. So you do have zero equals zero. So yes, so, so the function Oops, the function y of x equals zero, constant, that constant function is also the solution. The only other thing is that, well, when we, when we, when we, we square rooted, we, sorry, we squared to get rid of the square root, uh, is that allowed? Yes, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with doing that. Okay. If the square root is something, then yeah, the square is that positive thing. Okay. And I think, should I carry, let's see how, how much longer is this section? Yeah, I'll carry on with, I'll finish up several different equations. Okay, now the next, next example. Find a family of curves so that each member of the family is orthogonal to each member of the family of hyperbolas, x squared minus y squared equals c. Okay, so how do, how do we do this? If x squared minus y squared equals c, then are we, we take the derivative of both sides, so, 2x minus 2y dy dx, you have to apply the chain rule to the y, you're differentiating the y in terms of x, equals zero, because the derivative of a constant is zero. So we can solve that, and you find dy dx equals x over y. We recall from school, whatever, that the product of the slopes of two orthogonal lines is a, is a negative one. Okay, so we want to find curves that are orthogonal to the hyperbolas. We found that the hyperbola's derivative is x over y, at every point, the derivative is x over y. So at every point, the slope of, the hyper of each hyperbola is x over y. So we want something, we want curves that are orthogonal, so we want curves which have a slope of minus y of x, so that when you, times d, when you times these two derivatives, you get minus one. So we say, okay, we're trying to solve the differential equation dy dx equals minus y of x. We're trying to find the functions y that have this derivative, this slope at every point. Okay, so we want to solve dy d of dx equals y minus y of x. Okay, now at this point, we just need to do the, sep the separable stuff, which we've, they told us about. So let's try and do it ourselves before looking at what they do. So try it yourself, pause the video, try it yourself, and then come back and see if you did what I did. Okay, so we have, we're trying to solve dy, we're trying to solve dy dx equals minus y of x, we're trying to find y. So we can divide both sides by y and times both sides by dx. So you're gonna get you're gonna get y oh sorry, you're gonna get you're gonna get dy over y equals minus dx of x. Okay, and you integrate both sides. So what's the integral of one over y? Oh it's gonna be lin and then the absolute value of y equals. And here we have lin and the absolute value of x and a constant. Okay, we want to find y. So we put both sides to the e, and we're going to get the absolute value of y equals what? Equals, so you're going to have e to the minus lin x. So I could simplify this by putting this minus 1 up here. Okay, taking out, putting it up there, e to the, that, so we have e to the, taking e to the lin of that, so that's just going to be that, right? And then we also have, we have e to the this plus c, so you're going to times this by e to the c, because exponential has turned addition into multiplication. Okay. So it's more like, it's like e to the c over the absolute value of x, okay? But actually e to the c is really just, it's a constant. However, one thing it is, it's a constant that's always bigger than zero. Okay, so a and a is bigger than zero. Okay, some unknown constant bigger than zero. Now the question is, what do we do with the fact that we, we don't have we haven't now solved for y, we've solved for the absolute value of y. Hmm. What do they do? 
Then after the value for it, they get so that we have that we agree with that. We do that as well. And now here they've taken out the case where they've changed elin y elin absolute value of y to just y. Why have they done that? Oh, okay, I suppose because yes, because e to the ln of anything is no. What what if what what's stopping y from being negative in this case? Okay, let's let's investigate that. So we agree with what we've done so far. Uh, we just need to remember that we divided both sides by, to go through here, we divided both sides by y, okay? And that gave us, that would give us y equals zero. So we need to check, we need to check the y equals zero. And they say something about x equals zero. Let me leave that for now. Let on a deal with the fact that we found, we found absolute value of y equals a over the absolute value of x, where a is greater than zero, okay? So that means that either y is at a over absolute value of x, where a is greater than zero, or y is minus of that, the negative of that. So that would mean it's something like, oh, it's just negative a over absolute value of x, where a is greater than zero, because we're looking at the absolute value of y. Now the question is, is this thing actually a solution to the differential equation? So we should check it. So we differentiate this in terms of x. So you're going to get dy dx equals, OK, what's the derivative of, you're going to have a minus a, then what's the derivative of absolute value? This is, I can never remember, so Ah, I see. No, here was the... Okay, sorry. Look, here they say relaxing condition to A is not equal to zero when we change absolute value of Y to Y. Okay, so they're saying that this A, they're gonna, this A here can be positive or negative. It just can't be zero, right? Because... Sorry. In this case, that's like with the A being positive. And... Because the e to the c is always is never zero; it's always positive. Or you could have the, this version, but you can deal with that version by just taking out the minus sign and saying that oh, actually a is negative, but it's still not zero because e to the c is never zero. Okay. So this means this is our final solution here. Uh, y equals a over the absolute value of x, where a is not equal to zero. OK. We should still check that, though. In fact, you should always check. When you've done it, when you solve the differential equation, you should always check to see that your, what you found really is a solution. So we don't need this, because this is the same as what they did. OK. OK. We want to check, though, to see that what we found really is a solution. So we have. We have y equals, uh, y equals a of the absolute value of x, where a is not equal to 0. And I said, to do this, we're going to need to know the derivative of an absolute value, which I can never remember what it is. So let me think. Oh, OK, it's actually easy to work out, isn't it? Because the absolute value of x looks like that. Right? That's the absolute value of x. What's the derivative? Well, here the slope is 1, and here the slope is minus 1. OK. How can you get, how can you get that? Well, you can get that by making by saying that this, sorry, that the derivative of the absolute value of x, it could be x over the absolute value of x, okay? So that'll be 1 when x is positive and negative 1 when x is negative. It could also actually be the same as that, okay? Oh, this is when x is not equal to 0, of course. Um, when x is equal to 0, then the derivative of the absolute value is not defined, okay? So... Let's use this knowledge to check uh, our solution, y equals a over the absolute value of x. So we differentiate both sides. dy dx will equal a, and the absolute value of x is x over x over the absolute value of x, okay, where x is not equal to zero, at least when x is not equal to zero, that's the case. And what was the, what did we want? We wanted actually the equation we were solving was dy dx equals minus y over x. 
So what we, we have that y equals a over the absolute value of x. So this thing now is equal to hmm, this thing is equal to y times x. That's not what we want. We wanted y minus y over x. So what's going on here? Oh, sorry. I'm very sorry. We're taking the derivative of 1 over the absolute value, of course. Sorry. So dy dx is the derivative. Um, it's the derivative of a over the absolute value of x. So it's that's a times the derivative of and I'll write it as absolute value of x to the minus 1. So we need to use the chain rule to, to differentiate that. So bring down the minus, we have minus a, and then bring down the minus, so you, so you get minus a, and then we're going to have absolute value of x to the minus 2. Okay, and then now we have the derivative of the derivative of the absolute value of x, which is, we said, is x over the absolute value of x. Okay, but actually, you know what? Let me rather write that. I think it might be helpful to rather choose this representation of it. No, it doesn't matter. x over the absolute value of x. Okay. So, this is the same as minus a times x over the absolute value of x cubed. Okay. So that's the same as minus times y, because y is a over the absolute value of x, and we're left with an x over the absolute value of x squared. Okay. Now x over the absolute value of x, that is... Let's see. The absolute value of x, oh, the absolute value of x squared is actually just x squared, right? Because the x, the, the squaring also makes it, makes it positive. Makes, the squaring makes it positive, so you don't need the absolute value sign. And now we can cancel out those y's, the x's, to get minus y of x. Yay! Okay. So what we found, this a of absolute value of x, that really is a solution. But when we were making getting the solution, we assumed some things. So we divided both sides by y at one point. So then we're assuming that y is not equal to 0. And we took a log of both sides. Well, no. We're using... So that's the y equals 0. But it's also... Where did we say that x should not equal 0? I mean... Ah, the issue is that when we solved this here, right, we divided through by y and we divided through by x. Right? What did we do? When we solved that, we got 2x equals 2y dy over dx. Ah, yes. So you divide through by y. So actually, that's the point at which you're saying that y is not equal to 0. But then... What if x was 0? Then dy dx would be 0. Okay, so it would be a horizontal line. The, the, this would be, a, this would be um, where the hyperbola has a, a horizontal line, and the, 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 the curve that's orthogonal to it would have a vertical line, right? Which, is not, which would be an infinite derivative, which is why it's not reflected in this mm -hmm. working out, because it's, this, this stuff is not going to be as infinite. So the two special cases are y equals 0 and x equals 0. Okay, it says, what, in addition, there are two singular solutions, y equals 0 and x equals 0. This describes a second family of hyperbole orthogonal to the first. Oh, no, that's, this is now, this is talking about in general. So, yes, so y equals 0, that's when you have an infinite slope on the hyperbola, vertical, vert, the hyperbola is vertical, and you have a horizontal uh, line. And then x equals 0, that means you have a vertical line at x equals 0, right? OK. And then it says that the idea behind separable differential equations 
can be extended to solve certain PDEs using the method of separation of variables, uh, partial differential equations. But I think we don't do separation of variables in this course. Though it's very, I know it's very useful in physics, in like quantum mechanics and stuff. Okay.